Mmm, water. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Step Spacey, and welcome back to my community show. Alright, so, I'm just filming this one a little quickly. But anyway, today is our conclusion episode for Parts to a Good Game. The conclusion. <laughs> so, anyway, those of you who are just tuning into this and haven't seen uh, any of my Parts to a Good Game series, it's a... <clears throat> I've created a playlist separately from my community show on my channel now so that you can go back and look at them if you're ever curious to see what I had to say about them. But anyway, this is the show where we break down several different parts that I think qualify to make a good game. Make or break the game, in fact. And uh, over the past, well, it's been a while, but five episodes, mm, yes, over the past five episodes, we have discussed Silence Phone, various different sections of video games that make them a good game and how to make them into a good game using those parts. Anyway, so, this is the conclusion where we're going to discuss briefly all the things that I have discussed previously, and then give a final summation of what I have said. I sound all sorts of regal when I say it like that, yes, mm, yes. Anyway, my first episode was character. We went on and we talked about protagonists, we talked about antagonists, we talked about the sub-characters, the NPCs, as they were, and uh, discussed their um, use in stories and use in games and I didn't realize my cat was back there. What's up cat? Meow. <laughs> Oops, my bad. Anyway, so, um, oh by the way, this is going to be my new format. Hopefully I'll be able to use this side as a, my screen because my TV's over here now and it'd be a really awkward position because I have a couch right here so it'd be really weird. Anyway, but let's not go into that. It's not important yet. We're going to give the big old tour later on once my office is all together. Anyway, back to what we were saying. Protagonists, antagonists, sub-characters, and how they are integrated into a video game and how their usage can be done in such a way as to make a good game. So, we talked about how my favorite type of protagonist or the hero of the story, the main character of the story, generally falls under the anti-hero um, category and is a dynamic character, i.e. a character that will change throughout the series. And an anti... Silence! An anti-hero is a, the, not so much the hero. They don't do heroic stuff for heroic purposes or to be good or for fighting for justice or anything. They do things that serve themselves and serve those close to them. I use the example of a good anti-hero using Joel from The Last of Us and how he essentially sacrificed the human race to save Ellie because he didn't want her to die. And you know what? I, I, I can feel that. I, can, I, can, I would be along the same lines, you know? I wouldn't want my daughter or <laughs> daughter by proxy to be murdered or killed even in the name of saving the world because protagonists I feel a, be a better more relatable character is the best. Um, you know Anti-heroes always seem more human than the the heroic counterparts. Like, Superman doesn't really seem human at all. I mean, he's not human, obviously, so he's not going to seem human. <laughs> anyway, that brings us to the antagonist characters, which are the enemy, or enemies, of the story. And <clears throat> my, my whole idea of what would make a good antagonist a good enemy would be a believable or somewhat agreeable aim that they have. Like... I wanted to use the example of Assassin's Creed, but I could, for the life of me, remember what they were, what game it was, and uh, the Templars. Their their aim, and their goal is to bring world peace and happiness and whatnot. But their their methods are what make them the enemy, make them evil, and uh, what makes them evil and is that they they're trying to steal willpower from humanity. They're trying to steal um, humanity's ability to think and make its own decisions. And while, yes, that would lead to world peace, it wouldn't go about it the right way. And that, then we look at the other form of hero in... For Christ's sake, go away. <laughs> we look at the other form of hero or character in stories or games, either one really, the sub-heroes or the sub-characters or the uh, NPCs in the stories, who are basically just background characters, 
And my thing was that you need to avoid lazy writing when it comes to creating these characters, because honestly, you see the same uh, see the same characters. Oh, I'm just getting blown up by this freaking Discord. Because honestly, you see the same characters over and over again, and it gets a little boring. And you know, sure, you'll see a lot of the tropes, and I can understand sometimes using the tropes is kind of important in this case, because you you got these uh. You got such a long, large cast of characters, it's gonna get hard to write an interesting story for every single one of them. That was my summation on characters in video games. Basically, the important part are protagonists need to be more human and easily relatable, and they need to change throughout the story. They need to be affected by what's going on. And the antagonists need to have an agreeable, believable goal, and not just be the snidely whiplashes with the curly mustaches. <laughs> and, uh... Avoid lazy writing when it comes to sub-characters, but obviously you can't make everyone a seriously deep and dynamic character. So anyway, that brings us down, brings us to our next topic, which was the genre. Um, now, I broke this down into the several different sections, and now there is little you can do with genre that will actually make it bad, because a genre is in itself just the defining quality of the story. My big thing was to not force genre together. Do not to not try to like make like I was saying a romantic horror wouldn't make a very good story. I mean, technically you could. I mean, I think the Phantom of the Opera was kind of along those lines, but even that wasn't so much horror as it was romance. And it's always about finding a good way to meld the genre and apply it to the game. Like, you got your Final Fantasies, and a lot of them lately have been mostly science fiction rather than fantasy. And, you know, that's not too bad. But, technically, they haven't always been classified as fantasies. They've just been titled Final Fantasy. And, like I was saying, any genre can be good. It's, it's mostly up to your taste as far as what do you like. Now, me, I'm a big fan of fantasy and horror games. Those are my favorite type of, say, my favorite genre. Um, science fiction definitely, if it's well executed, can be good. I mean, I love the Mass Effect series because it was a good space opera, a very good science fiction game uh, series. <clears throat> but I'm not too inclined to always go science fiction, um, mostly because people don't always execute it well, and that can turn out really bad and really, really break the immersion. <laughs> anyway, after that, I went into the double feature episode which was story and gameplay which was kind of important but I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna break it down again into two separate subjects starting with the story and this one above all must be strong um, if the game's story is weak it's not gonna be enjoyable you know you, you want yourself a clear beginning a clear middle and a clear end now where those occur within the story doesn't really too awful much affected as long as they're strong and good you want to kind of see a good flow in between them like I've seen some games that start out with a, a clash in the middle of the game then jump back to the beginning and then build you up to that middle again and those were fun those were exciting those were a really good way to get you hooked into the game and you're like yeah <laughs> sometimes you'll go through stories and then you'll jump way back into the past and you'll have your little flashbacks and they're technically still in the middle there climaxing in the story but you know basically just clear and you want to blend them in well you don't want to have it just suddenly build up not even build up in the beginning just introduce everybody then all of a sudden jump up and you got action in the middle and the climax and then jump down to the end and it's just really jerky and really hard to understand and follow avoid cliffhanger endings in your stories unless and I stress this unless there is going to be a sequel or Maybe I will allow for maybe as long as there's enough information within the story for you to form an ending in your mind. But if it just builds up, builds up, builds up, and then cuts off, no, you don't want to do that. Because then you're going to want the people to be like, where's the end of my story? And yes, I know. Generally, people will say it's about the journey. It's not about the end. But a bad ending can ruin a story so quickly and so easily. And this is where I started to get into uh, the gameplay aspect of 
well, games. <laughs> and there were basically, it comes down to it has to be fun. It has to be enjoyable to play. Uh, it has to be challenging, but not impossible. We don't want it to be too too hard because then people won't want to play it. And, you know, they just get tired of it and rage quit and throw the disc out the window and light it on fire and all that fun stuff. Uh, but really, any type of uh, any type of gameplay can be good. You just want to keep it fun. You want to keep it interesting. You want to keep it slightly challenging. When it comes to story and gameplay, though, you want to find a good even balance between the two because if it's too story heavy, then you might as well just watch a movie. And if it's too gameplay heavy, then well, you might as well just be playing Call of Duty. <laughs> and you know, no offense to Call of Duty, it's got a a, a high action packed fun multiplayer. And it's good stress relief, but it's not really too much into the entertainment type of style. But that leads us to mechanics. Now, the mechanics of the gameplay kind of define the type of game that it is, i.e. first-person shooter. You're going to have your first-person shooter. You got poop poo and you're going to poo poo and you're going to chow I don't know what the chow chow thing was, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but the mechanics are kind of important because you want it interesting. You want to keep the player involved in things and you know not knocking again call of duty because it's got some interesting gameplay mechanics as far as you know what you can do but they're always fairly consistent throughout the game and even into other games it's always you know r2 to to fire r1 to, to aim you know all that stuff triggers whatnot it's all you know fairly standard and stock and technically interesting because it's easy and you don't have to relearn it every time. And that's good too. But other games, like I had mentioned I Am Bread and Octodad, in the interesting gameplay mechanics aspect, because they, uh, they created literally a whole new control scheme for your characters in those games. And that was like the whole appeal of the game, really. And, uh, yeah. Because of that, you know, you've got people buying the game because it's interesting. And not to knock it, Octodad had a pretty interesting and funny story, which was pretty cool. After I got through with Octodad and everything, I was trying to think of, like, what other sort of thing, you know. You don't want to change the gameplay mechanics of some games because people will get cranky about it. Oh, I don't want to learn this new button schema. I don't want to learn how to fire a gun. But I am going out on a limb and saying here, don't be afraid of what's new. New doesn't always mean bad. Of course, new can be bad if it's not executed well. But like I said, execution is pretty key in your game gameplay mechanics. Anyway, enough about mechanics. Let's move on to graphics. Graphics are what make video games video games because without the video part of video games, it's just games. And that's not bad. Board games are fun. And so is football, people say. <laughs> but anyway, you know, the, the, it, it really helps to give you the immersion, you know, into the game. The graphics, they help you to see and feel yourself inside that world that's created for you. And, you know, I have to say, high, high fidelity, you know, look, larger, beautiful, flashy games are not essential. If the graphics are the only thing that carry the game, it's a bad game. Fun to look at, but ultimately it's a bad game. Even though it's beautiful and stuff, if if even though the, the beauty and everything is not important, bad graphics can actually help to break immersion so you don't feel very involved. You feel like a spectator. You feel like you're playing a game. And which most games these days are trying to give you the full immersive effect. And that's that's a good thing. If the game's good, <laughs> if the game's bad, then you won't be in it at all. Flashier does not equal good. Flashy can be good, but it doesn't mean good. Because, like I said, it should not be what carries the game. Anyway, video games are... Whew, video games are amazing little micro-universes that we... We all have our opinions about what makes it good. And, you know... It generally boils down to one important question. Do I enjoy playing it? And you know what I define as good 
what I what I have defined as what makes a game good are mostly just universal little things within the game. Like I don't say which genre is better than all the other ones because I just tell you what my opinion is. And if my if I like RPGs, I love my some RPGs. Um, I'm okay at the first person RPGs, but I mostly like turn based RPGs. Yeah, you know, something to do with speed and clunky and a mold and all that jazz. But you know. <laughs> Those are my opinions, but the, the, the character part, the story part, the gameplay part, that those are mostly, you know, universal truths that you can apply to every game, and even movies and video games, and, and, and books. <laughs> uh, of course, we might not show the ideas, these, the, the opinions that I have. You know, the popularity of Call of Duty uh, multiplayer will really show that we don't all agree on that. You know, Call of Duty multiplayer's got no no story behind it at all just go shoot these people and uh the the the, the mechanics are all the same and, and the characters are all 2d and static you shoot bad guy he dead and you know these sort of things have their place and people enjoy doing that sort of thing and people even turn it into a competition you know can i do better than the next person can i do better than the next person and that's cool it's just to me that that doesn't make a real good game it's just flat I can't do it very often. I, I do it on occasions. I'll jump into a game, shoot some bad guys and get out, or shoot some other players, I mean, and get out and go on with my day. But I can't get wrapped up in a game like that. And some people can't, like I said. That part's my opinion, and I'm cool with it. <clears throat> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this series as even, even half as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, please go and poke that like button for me. If you'd like to, you can leave a comment down below, you know. <clears throat> Um, you can talk about the series, or if there's anything else you might want to see me talk about in the future, you're more than welcome to write it down there in the comments, and I'll get back to it as soon as I can. And if I do end up making a video based on something that you pitched, or any of you pitched, then I will credit you in the video. You know, throw your little comment up on the page, be like, this person said I should talk about this, so blame them, not me. <laughs> Anyway, comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, when I can, if I can. You know all that jazz. And tune in next time where I might be doing a tutorial. I have an idea for what I want to do for my next episode. It's going to be pretty cool, I hope. If not, it's going to be horrible and you're going to hate me for it. But anyway, thank you guys so much. And tune in next time. And until then, night.